Hey everybody, Bear Bets Podcast Super Bowl Week is upon us. I'm your host, Bear, Chris Felica. Different surroundings here. Out in Los Angeles this week with my co-host Jeff Schwartz for the Bad Bet Bear Bets Podcast. And Sammy and Will will be joining us in on the uh, group uh, gambling group chat. But uh Nice, nice studio here. It's fantastic. It's nice to be in here. It's nice air conditioning. I like the air in here. It's very. It's very much chill. cooler here than it yeah. is. It, 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 you know, you know, it's, it's good to like see the people we work with all year long. It's <laughs> just talking to people in here and trading yes, texting. texting good, yeah. good, good to see. Good to, to see, see everyone in person. And- I am very happy Super Bowl week is here, Bear, because the buildup obviously after Sunday night, you're like, okay, the matchup is set. Mm-hmm. And then I feel like there's a lull as you sort of like that first Monday, right? You sort of like dig into the game, and then you have your opinion. And then I feel like I wait a little bit, and then this whole just weekend preparing for the podcast, you just like hammer it hard, and the game will be here before we know. I just yeah. I love this week of Super Bowl. Yeah, no, it, it, I, I, and the thing is, that I think in the next few days, like now the, the week is here, like as the week goes on, like I, I think the week will, the anticipation of it will probably cause it to drag on a little bit, and like yeah. you go, we want it to be here so quickly, and then it'd be like, oh, it's only it's only Tuesday, oh, it's only Wednesday, oh my gosh, it's only Thursday, and then. But Sunday you'll get here. This is why we have all the episodes for the week. For I know P- people, people to listen, people to do their homework. And the first episode that we that we have here focused solely on the on the Kansas City Chiefs. I am a little worried at how much I like the Chiefs to win this game. It, it worries me as a Chiefs fan because you know I was cautious against Buffalo. I thought they should cover that game. I wasn't quite sure they'd win. I thought it's tough to go on the road. But Buffalo was. I thought you know the Buffalo's defense. The Chiefs. I didn't think the Chiefs would win last week. We talked about this. I I, I might have. Ended up on Chiefs plus five because I thought the number got too big. But I wasn't quite sure they'd win. And I feel a little bit too comfortable that I made my first wager almost immediately Sunday night on Chiefs money line uh, because As most people did. That, that That's the thing. But, but Bear, how much do you take into consideration that there's only one game and, like, I know sharp people that are on the Niners. I know sharp, sharp you know, the pe- like syndicate people, right, that are on the Niners. You do as well. I know someone in Kansas City, too. I feel like you sort of... Some of the props we'll get into are very public, right? All the, the Kelsey stuff, mm-hmm. McCaffrey and Mahomes. I get that. But I feel like sometimes, I don't know, there's no sharp or square play on a, a side or total in a Super Bowl when everyone's wagering on it. it, it kind of, I remember last year, too. Wasn't last year, I, I, I think most people were on the Eagles right off. I, I, it, I would imagine everyone was on the Eagles right off the bat last year because of the, the way they played, the way they had dominated, the way they had just their offensive defensive lines. Look, when you lead the league in sacks and when you win up front with your offensive line, a lot of people just look at that in the base level and say, that team's win the Super Bowl, right? And we look at this game, I think the Chiefs have a lot of advantages in this matchup. And I think that while I am fully on board with Vegas power rankings, with all the advanced stats, we use them, we like them, we talk about them. It does feel like these teams don't really match their regular season stats heading into this game. Like, for example, the Chiefs are 15th in passing efficiency this season. Yeah, makes sense when you watch them play. But are, are they really 15th heading in this game? Like, are you are you looking at, at them and saying, you know what, that's only the 15th best, you know, best passing offense this season? Well, I, I think what you need to realize, I think you need to take that into account, but I do think you also need to take into account how the offense changed after that Raiders game and yes. started doing things differently. But I still do think you need to realize that the potential is there for them to oh, yeah. be the offense that they were for a good part of the year. And, and I think that's I think that's probably why you've seen uh, all that immediate money come on Kansas yeah. City because of the combination of how good the Chiefs have been uh, in the playoffs, the narrative of Mahomes as an underdog. Right. Um, I don't buy that narrative, by the way. That, that to me, is not a reason but, to bet on but, this but, game. But that's what people... Oh, what of course, I, yeah. The Super Bowl is going to attract a lot of oh, casual yeah. betters. Right. And, and I think that's what yeah. y- you're going to get. But but I think th- where you have the, the Niners not playing as well, and the Niners fortunate yeah. to win, both it, it easily could have lost one or both of yeah. those games. So the Niners... But, I think that's the, the the internal wrestling debate. Do you t- factor in what the ch- the Chiefs were for basically all of the regular season, correct? Or do you take into effect what the what the Niners were for basically yeah. all of the regular season, like power rated one or two? Right. And so uh, I, I think I do think you need to pay attention what is going on recently. But at the same time, you don't want to be fully hand uh, handcuffed by the recency bias. Absolutely. 
And I think the, the hardest part for me before we get into the gambling group chat and our best bets later in this episode is the idea of flipping a switch, right? I do not believe in the NFL you flip a switch. Like the, the idea that you basically play one way and then all of a sudden you play the other way in the postseason. Other sports, basketball, it certainly happens, right? We've seen it over the years. The Lakers last year didn't win the championship, but kind of lollygagged and, and made the West Conference Finals. The Warriors a few years ago when all the injuries, right, and they kind of the last week of the season, they all came back. They won a championship. Baseball doesn't happen like this, and football doesn't happen like this, where you just don't start playing better in the postseason. Because typically, you're not in the position to play in the postseason if you don't play well in the regular season. But the Chiefs are making me rethink a little bit of my position, right? Because you mentioned that Raiders lost 20-14. to 14. They looked bad. Since then, since then, they've been better. But it's it's the lack of mistakes bear. No turnovers, right? Well, one turnover, I should say. One bad turnover. Yeah. <laughs> one bad turnover. But drop passes, eliminated. Penalties, eliminated. Poor offensive line play at times, eliminated. You know, the 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 run game, elevated. Wide receivers, el- like everything is better in the postseason. And I don't believe often that teams can play this way, yet the Chiefs are sort of proving me wrong right now. No, they are. And in the gambling group chat, uh, we, we, we talk a lot about this. And you mentioned like the simple handicapping of this game. There are a lot of things for the Chiefs that we that that, that you like if you go posi- check mark by check yeah. mark by check mark. Like there, there are things within this matchup with the Chiefs uh, that you like. So let's let's get into it with uh, with with Sammy and Will in the gambling group chat. Where we break down all of our bets and thoughts uh, surrounding the Kansas City Chiefs. Bearbets Pod continues here. Super Bowl week. First episode that we have here uh, involves Kansas City Chiefs wagers. So uh, the gambling group chat here with Sammy P, Will, Jeff, and myself. Uh, this this will focus primarily uh, on the Kansas City Chiefs, whether it involves a game wager uh, on the side or total, uh, Chiefs prop, anything to do uh, Kansas City Chiefs. So I, I guess we'll start with uh, – with you, Sammy, I know you've been. We were been talking all year about accumulating Chiefs wagers in Super Bowl markets. What particularly sticks out to you involving the the Chiefs, whether it's a game related side total bet or a a prop? I think it's the tax on not only Mahomes but the entire Chiefs passing offense. Yes, they've been better than they were in the regular season. Bear, I think we all understand that, but. At the end of the day, these receivers are still not great. We know Travis Kelsey is one of the best playoff performers of all time, but this is still a team that I think butters its bread with the running game. And Pacheco should have his fair share of carries and yards. So when we look at Mahomes, especially in the passing touchdown market, over one and a half is going to be one of the most popular wagers of the entire week. Mahomes over this, Mahomes over that, but specifically over one and a half passing touchdowns. It is 140. 150, 155, Mm. 160, 165. That's the juice you have to lay to win 100 on Mahomes. So at one sportsbook in this country, I took Mahomes under one and a half passing touchdowns at plus 130. That's not to say he can't throw two or three. I'm just never laying minus 160 on a team that has struggled to throw passing touchdowns all season long. So that's a bet that's not going to be popular. But mathematically to me, at plus 130, I had to pull the trigger. You know, if somebody woke up from a coma on Christmas, they're saying, what, the Chiefs are in this game? How did this happen? <laughs> like, wh- what what happened to get the Chiefs back into this game? Because they looked so bad for so uh, so many stretches, such long stretches this season. But uh, I agree with a lot of what Sammy said. I think it's key here. I think it's still early enough where this applies, where if you like the overs on the popular players, the Mahomes, the Kelseys, uh, and just we'll, we'll keep it to the Chiefs players for now, but if you like the overs, bet them as early as possible. If you like the unders late, because this is the Super Bowl, this, there's a lot of recreational money, a lot of $25, 50 bets. They add up and they affect the market. And the guys betting 25 50 bucks, they want to bet the fun stuff. They want to bet the overs. They, they don't want to sit there and root for Mahomes to go under his passing total, touchdowns, yards, things like that. So overs bet them early, unders bet them late. Uh, one I like, and I think – We'll, we'll still go up is Mahomes over rushing yards. It's at 26 and a half. It's funny. He had two carries for like 18 yards early against the Ravens in the AFC title game and then just stopped running. They sort of shut it down on offense, but big games, he tends to run more. Of course, you know, you have to sweat out possibly kneels at the end of the game if you do like the Chiefs to win this game. But uh, I, I think Mahomes still has limited weapons. There will be 
three, four, five times where he takes off and runs, gets six, seven, eight yards at a clip. Uh, so to me, he'll be in the 30s, maybe 40s at some point. Again, you got to sweat out the knees, but Mahomes over rushing 25 and a half, 26 and a half. Of course, shop around. There's a, a lot of disparity in, in these numbers, book to book. So shopping is very important this time of year, but Mahomes over rushing yards, one that sticks out to me, Bear. Yeah, I, I, two, two things. I believe on, on that, I believe there was a. Uh, a prop on a number of Mahomes rushing attempts, which I think was four and a half, it which is. That, that, that is a bet that I absolutely like because you've got a, a number of ways to win that bet, whether it's the scrambles, uh, whether it's if the Chiefs are winning the game, you got kneel downs at the end of the game, which count as rushing attempts, and that's not going to involve any yardage. It's just simply the attempt. So I'm with you there, Will. And you also mentioned something about uh, think back to December. Uh, Kansas City in this game. Are you, are you kidding me? I, I don't know, Sammy, if you're able to like think back to like Christmas Day when and this was something I wrote about in like in my three reasons to uh, bet the Chiefs or bet the Niners type uh, uh, columns that I did. Like you think back to that 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 day of Christmas Day when the Chiefs just lost to the Raiders, uh, allowed two non-offensive touchdowns. The offense was terrible. Their third loss in four games, fourth loss in six games. Like what would have San Francisco been favored against Kansas City? Like if that game were played the week after Christmas, like. Isn't San Francisco like a five, five and a half point favorite? So aren't you kind of getting maybe a little bit of maybe value here maybe on San Francisco? It's funny you bring that up because the number to me on January 1st was San Francisco minus 5.3. So there you have it. But I I know we're going to get to Mr. Chief in a second, and he's going to say the regular season doesn't matter. And I think there's, there's probably truth to both of those statements because you have a team that has been in four Super Bowls in the last five years. And you have a quarterback, Jeff, Mr. Chief, that has not turned the ball over one time this postseason. And I think there's something to be said about that. So we have really changed the weight of the number. And, you know, power ratings are usually the combination of an entire season where you really, when you're making a line in Vegas, like there's no way in hell the books could have opened San Francisco three or higher because they would have written nothing but chief money. They would have been completely liable on money line bets at plus 150, plus 160 or higher. And you also have to think there's the future liability where San Francisco, after that three game losing streak, floated out to 10, 12 to one and then got hot and everybody bet the Niners for five, six straight weeks. So all of these factors are baked into the line. We did see the sharpest positions though, boys and girls on San Francisco, when the money came in on Kansas City, night of the championship weekend, from two and a half down to one, and then just an avalanche of sharp money on Niners minus one, Niners minus one and a half, and Niners on the money line. Oh, man, where to begin, guys? Oh, so so much here. So much here. Obviously, I, I am rooting for the Chiefs in this game. Um, I think it's worth pointing out that, that Christmas Day, right? And kind of since that moment, the Niners defense, guys, has not been very good. I think it's fair to me. Even the weekend before, they allowed 29 points to Arizona and over 400 yards. And they got blasted by the Ravens, went to Washington. First half wasn't good. Second half was better. Didn't play week 18. And then since then, their, their rush defense especially has been really bad. Sammy mentioned the Chiefs leaning more on the rush in this game. I can certainly see Pacheco being a big part. Look what the Niners have done in the postseason, allowing to, the, the Packers and Lions to rush for so many yards. They have now allowed, by the way, um, a rusher to get over 16 yards. Six rushers in the last five games. I think Pacheco over 15 and a half for the longest rush here is certainly in play. I don't really trust many other Pacheco props because I think Andy Reid is not trustworthy to run the football the entire game. But they're going to run the football, guys. Look at the rush defense. It has not been good recently. I don't see them proving this week against a really good Chiefs offensive line. And, Sammy, you mentioned the uh, the passing attack for Kansas City. You're, you're certainly right about it. The wide receivers haven't changed at all. MVS is catching the football, which is really nice. It's been very helpful for them. But Rasheed Rice is a legit wide receiver for this team. Like He's a good wide receiver. And the Chiefs are going to use him a lot in this game. He has, right now, the most receptions, the most receiving yards, and the most touchdowns for any Chiefs wide receiver in the postseason combined. He's doing a good job. The Niners defense, guys, is static on 80% of snaps. That means they line up and do not move. 
And that doesn't work against Kansas City. Mahomes is going to eat that up. He will throw the ball short. We saw last week against Baltimore. He'll get the ball out quickly. I think Ray Shirez, guys, has a big game. I have his over 6.5. I have his over 66.5 receiving yards. I think he's the guy in this game. They'll, they'll try to stop Travis Kelsey, of course. But Ray Shirez, to me, is a guy that's going to be productive in this game because he has been productive recently, and they're going to have to use him. And the Niners allow a lot of kind of free releases into their zones, and Mahomes will find them often and early in this yeah, game. Yeah, I, I think – uh, Sammy was talking about the over money, over money, over money coming up. Like one one bit that I did like over uh, in, involving Mahomes was over 36 and a half yards for the the longest pass attempt, or, or long, longest completion rather by by Mahomes and the Chiefs. Because I think with Rasheed Rice, with maybe Kelsey making a play or Hardman or someone, maybe, maybe MVS. I, I think maybe the, the the way the game goes and with how for, the 49ers secondary has been kind of shaky, I, I think there is potential for at least one big play. So I, I did play uh, Mahomes over 36 and a half yards for longest completions. Hey, Will, like, we, we, we're talking about like just this game, and, and we've talked about it uh, you know, outside of this pod and outside of the text chain. Like, you think about just like the basic handicapping of this game, and like if you're doing it like old school Jimmy the Greek Pete Axtome style, and you and you're doing it, Brent Musburger like checking the boxes like on one side and another, like you can make a pretty good case that like Reed Reed and Spags versus Shanahan and Wilkes advantage Chiefs, Mahomes versus Purdy advantage Chiefs. The, the way the defenses are playing right now, advantage Chiefs. Uh, special teams with the kickers. Butker kicked the game-winning field goal in the Super Bowl last year against Jake Moody, who is a, a rookie and shaky. Like the only thing that you would probably give an advantage to would probably be uh, the, the Niners and the number of different offensive weapons that they have. So, like, is that enough? To, to warrant maybe a bet now on Kansas City plus two uh, now that it has come back up to two for you? Yeah, you laid it out perfectly because if you're if you're taking the Chiefs, you're getting the better quarterback, the better coach, the better kicker, the better defense, and you're getting a couple of points. There's some two and a halfs out there to boot. Sounds like a lot. Now, I know the skill players, it's a very lopsided conversation. It's not a, much of a discussion when you line up Kittle, IU, McCaffrey, uh, Debo, Samuel. I mean, it's just, it, that's not a fair fight, but the rest of the boxes, like you said, I'll go to the Chiefs and the kicker. Let's not overlook the kicker because it's it, it's not a way to just handicap a game, just go kicker versus kicker, but a lot of the time these games are close. They come down to a kick. Um, you know, I'm curious what you guys think. Fourth and two from like the 30, the Dan Campbell situation. The, Shanahan's very conservative. He's he'll not kick, a go-for guy, kick. but if he'll kick, he'll he kick. probably will. And I don't Absolutely. know if that ball's going through the uprights. <laughs> and that's the thing about this game too, right? Andy Reid has learned to be aggressive because of Patrick Mahomes, right? We saw early in the Ravens game, he went for it because he has that quarterback. Point. Shanahan has always kicked the field goals. We saw the end of the first half against the Packers. He played for a field goal at home, like needing points. In he, the played, rain. He, he played for, it was like, it was, he just, he always tends to play for, or a field goal in these situations. One thing to, to mention, too, about the matchups, Baron, you're, you're absolutely right. The skill position guys on the 49ers are better than the Chiefs. But let's talk about the trenches, guys, right? Outside of Trent Williams, the Niners offensive line is kind of goes left to right, like good, decent, bad, and bad. And the Chiefs defensive line, you got Chris Jones, you got Carl Loftus, a man who's out, which is not great, but they're able to generate pressure with their blitz packages. Spags might be one of the better coordinators in any big game ever. He's done an incredible job as a, and he's 17, he's 17 to four, Spags is, as a defensive coordinator in the postseason. Now, obviously, that's a team stat right. per se, but his defense is always pulling the situation. He does a good job yes. of prepping, though. I have Chris Jones, guys, over a, over a quarter of a sack at plus 130. In three Super Bowls, he's had zero quarterback hits and zero sacks. I feel like that changes in this game because of the matchups. The Chiefs have better offensive line in totality, even without Tooney there. Better defensive line, possibly, against Niners' offensive line. I think they have more matchups than just what Bear had mentioned. No, I, I think it's well said. I, I think, and look, we could talk about this game, um, you know, as much as we want. It's uh, it's probably going to come down to a call, a turnover, you know, bounce of a ball. I'd be very surprised if either team runs away from this game. And like you guys said, it's a very tricky handicap where September through December, the 49ers are four or five point favorites. You're getting a discount on the 49ers if you look at it that way. But the last month or so, the Chiefs have been the better team, the much better team. And what has San Francisco shown you really since the Ravens game on Christmas night? They've had bad performance after bad performance. I can't count, you know, a, a win against the Commanders. That game was even tied, I think, in the second half. Uh, they didn't play their guys against the Rams to throw that game out and they were lucky to win either of these games i can't remember a team i, I, I meant to go through it but a team that's in the super bowl 
Sometimes they get lucky once. They got lucky twice here. It's very unusual to go in the Super Bowl playing as poorly as they have. Defense, and look, I'm a Purdy guy. Purdy has not played well. The coach can get tight. It's hard to like what you've seen from this 49er team recently. Sammy, any any rebuttal? Agree, disagree? Anything to add? <laughs> and yet they're still favored, and they're 14-5 and five in the fourth quarter this year. That's the crazy stat. I, if you would have asked... You know, 10 people off the street. Who's better in the fourth quarter? I feel like the majority of people would say, oh, Kansas City, they have Mahomes. But San Francisco has proven, yes, they were sloppy for three quarters against Green Bay. Yes, they sucked against Detroit in the first half. But this team has continuously showed us that they can come back and they can win. They outscored Green Bay 10-0 in the fourth quarter. They outscored Detroit 10-7 in the fourth quarter. Um, I know a buddy that laid... San Francisco minus a half point in the fourth quarter. Right now, you can make these bets. You can bet first, second, third, fourth quarter. He bet that. I didn't do it. I haven't jumped in yet. But the Niners have outscored 14 of their 19 opponents in the fourth quarter. Say what you will. I mean, that's a decent sample size. Uh, I also, our friends at the Superbook have a tremendous cross-board prop. I don't know if you guys have seen this one. It's Caitlin Clark uh -oh. points in the first half. <laughs> oh, yeah. Caitlin Clark first half points against Travis Kelsey first half receiving yards. Ooh. Clark is getting three and a half. I remind everybody, Caitlin Clark just scored 38 points against <laughs> Nebraska a week ago. 38 on the road. She could give 40 against Nebraska. Nebraska, I don't know how much Nebraska women's basketball everybody's watching, but they don't really play any defense. No. So if I can get 40 from Caitlin Clark, I get the three and a half. Now Travis Kelsey needs 44 yards in the first half to beat me. So I will be betting Caitlin Clark through a proxy in <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> we, 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 we all have those proxies in Vegas. It's funny you brought that one, that prop up because I was looking at, at the Superbook's prop sheet last night, and I like – saw the other prop involving Caitlin Clark three-pointers plus a half versus Kelsey receptions. And uh, we'll, we'll, I'll, it's a little tease for another episode down the line here. Uh, I'll give you my thoughts on that. But there, there was a bet with Kelsey that I did like. It, it, it's available at, at the Superbook. And I, or this actually is a FanDuel is where I saw it. Travis Kelsey rush yards over a half at plus 750. Like, is it a little bit of a dart throw? Yes, but we've seen Andy Reid do the ridiculous stuff near the goal oh. line on fourth and short. Let's do a shotgun snap to, to Kelsey for a yard. Like, all it takes is a yard. All you got to do is call one play. The, 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 the little the handoff inside or the, for a play, play, play seven and a half to one, I'm willing to lose a little bit of pizza money on, on, on the opportunity that maybe Kelsey, uh, maybe Andy Reid runs that dumb play that I scream at every time I see it. But if I scream at it and he gets a yard and I hit seven and a half to one, Jeff, I'm kind of happy with that. Andy Reid can't help himself. Like, what, what's the play in this game they can't? So I, I wagered on McCole Hardman to score a touchdown plus 1,100 for that. For, for, Is he going to touch the ball after last week? <laughs> well, here's, well, here's, so here's, well, it was two weeks ago. Here's two the reason ago. why. When the Chiefs played the Niners in, in 2022, if you watch that game, they did a ton of jet sweeps, a ton of end arounds because they wanted to mess with Bosa. It was a great game plan. They, they did a fabulous job of trying to find ways to get after him. And part of that was the jet sweeps and sort of the different types of plays. Look at the last rule, guys. Sky Moore scored a touchdown, right? Kadarius Tony scored a touchdown. Andy Reid will give the ball to whoever scored a touchdown. I feel like McCole Hardman plus 1,100 as sort of the – the elder statesman in the wide receiver room. I mean, he's was there for all of them, right? He's been there for all the Super Bowls. I, I feel like that's a decent enough wager for him to get one touchdown this game on a jet sweep or some sort of odd play in the goal line where he's involved. Yeah, one more chief uh, thing real quick for me, actually, too. Uh, so uh, we mentioned the kicking advantage. You could bet who will make the longest field goal. I like the Chiefs in that one. I think it's minus yeah. 120 both ways. At least it was uh, a little while ago when I looked. Of course, again, shop around. You're going to find different prices here for the, for this game. Um, and Chiefs plus a half for the first quarter. Yeah, so you're, you're laying minus 155 or so. Uh, it, it's juiced, but both these teams will defer. Neither team is taking mm -hmm. the kickoff all year. Nobody wants the ball. Everyone wants to defer and, and try the double dip. Uh, so you might get a scenario where you get the ball first and San Francisco only gets one possession. There could be only three possessions in the first quarter. You get two out of the three, and it's just it's hard to win the first quarter. Nobody's trying to win the first quarter. So whether it's 7-7, 3-3, if you're up 3-0, you're up 7 There's a lot of ways to 
to win this. There are very few ways to lose this. So I don't mind laying the 155 and just taking that half a point here in the first quarter with yeah, the Chiefs. It's, it's so it's so much more enjoyable when when you know you had a uh, a lot like a game like the Lions Niners where where you know Campbell will take the ball and you know Shanahan yes. will defer and you know the Niners are going to get the ball to start the third quarter and you take the you take the Niners m- minus a half or whatever in the. Uh, in, in in the third quarter. Before we uh, wrap up the uh, uh, the Chiefs portion of this, are we uh, and anybody else have any other uh, wagers or any other thoughts or comments to add on uh, something Chiefs centric? I have one more wrinkle on Kelsey. This comes out of my Chicago degenerate group thread. And is the bartender involved in this? Says, the bartender is not. He doesn't group text. He doesn't know how to do that yet. <laughs> so there's a bet floating around. Will the Super Bowl MVP mention Taylor Swift? or Taylor Swift, and it's six to one. And the one guy goes, that's a great bet. And I said, no, it's not, number one. (laughs) Number two, if you're going to bet that, why don't you just bet Travis Kelsey to win the MVP at 17 to one? And the response was, I don't get it. What do you mean? And I said, do you think think Chris Jones is going to mention Taylor Swift? Do you think Patrick Mahomes is going to go, oh, Taylor Swift? No, like there's one person that's going to mention Taylor or Swift or Taylor Swift, and it's Travis Kelsey. That's it. So if you're looking to bet that, just bet him to win the MVP at 17, not everybody at 6 to 1. Does that make sense in in this group? Pretty pretty clear to me. It makes sense. But Travis Kelsey, I would bet the no in a heartbeat. He does not mention Taylor Swift at any point of any post game speech. He just it doesn't. He's not going to do that. Uh, but any other MVP thoughts, guys? Like, if it's not Mahomes and the Chiefs win, who is the MVP in this game? Oh. Is it is it Pacheco? It's going to be. I can't see it being anybody other than Mahomes. If Williams didn't win it a couple of years right. ago when they beat the Niners, when he clearly should have, it's going to be Mahomes. Like, I, I wouldn't bet anybody else on the Chiefs to be MVP. Not even Pacheco this. going no, for one twenty-five and no. two touchdowns. I wouldn't. I would. I don't know about you. No, I'm with you. Nope, I'm with you. I think when we do our 49ers discussion, there are some there, there are some options just because uh, Purdy's a little bit of a divisive player. There's so many skill guys. The 49ers, we can have a discussion. If Mahomes and uh, if the Chiefs win it, it's going to be Mahomes. I don't know that there's any value with that because it's basically a match of the money line. So yeah, to me, it's if it's the Chiefs, if if, it, if it's the Chiefs, it's Mahomes. It was Damian Williams scoring three touchdowns four years ago and he didn't win it. So uh, I think that's uh, you know it, it's always possible. Maybe Kelsey can steal it, but I don't think so. By the way, I'm 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 kind of I'm I'm gonna go on my little bit of a soapbox rant here. Like all of a sudden, all these people catching up to Taylor, catching on to Taylor. Oh gosh, you're gonna be there? Could she get there? She's first. gonna be in Japan. We were talking about this on Bear Bet's Pod in October about yes. her potential concert uh, overlap yes. in Japan. Can we get there? So everybody's stealing content and stealing ideas and thinking it's their own now. Think back, think back to October when when this little core group of four right here we're, we're breaking down the real core issues at hand. So uh, there we go I'm, 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 I'm patting ourselves in the back here because because no one else will apparently do it so good stuff guys we'll do that they'll do it for the Chiefs we'll uh we'll have other stuff throughout the week uh, Niners centric prop centric all of this stuff so uh good job brother the last Chiefs gambling group chat there bear as as usual with all these wagers for the Super Bowl a lot that we went over yeah a lot of points some disagreements some not um we have our best bets now mm-hmm where is your best bet after all we've talked about with Kansas City? I, I think my best bet uh, came as a result of that gambling group. Yeah. I'm talking about how the, the the game could go and something that we were talking about with the quarterback ability to run the ball. I, I like Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes to go over yep. four and a half rushing attempts uh, in the game because I think there's two. There are two ways and a combination of two ways that you can win. I, I think it is. The fact that Kansas City's offense, uh, with him uh, avoiding uh, avoiding the uh, the pressure, I think he will have some undesigned some scrambles to, that that will get him towards that number. And there is the possibility that if the Chiefs yeah. are winning the game, um, you're going to have the ball last. You get a couple of kneel downs, which may take away yardage, but it doesn't take away the attempt. It gives you an attempt. So I, I think there are multiple ways that you can win with Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes over four and a half uh, rushing attempts in this game. So that is my best bet. I thought about going longest pass completion over 36 and a half yards because I do think yeah. there's a pass there. But but I think as we were talking about the game, uh, I think there's a potential for the Niners pass rush to get 
to Mahomes with some of the, the Chiefs offensive line play, if it's not as great as it had been and as good as it was last week, I, I think you, we're going to see him take off uh, a couple of times. Uh, and obviously in that Bills game, he had a great game doing that as well. So Mahomes over four and a half passing uh, rushing attempts. He hit mm-hmm. that the last two weeks on the kneel downs against Buffalo and, <laughs> and Baltimore, which again, to your point about rush yards versus sort of kneel down. I mean, the, the attempts, I should say, is the better way to go here. You, you can kneel down the end of the first half, right. to end the game, yep. um, and he might be running for his life against this uh, Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, depending on, obviously, the, the health of, of Joe Tooney there. I like a lot of Chiefs wagers, Bear. I know uh, you do. Um, I mean, I have like five. I'm going to go with uh, with the one I like the most, the one I bet almost immediately. Uh, Rishi Rice over 66 and a half receiving yards here, guys. As I mentioned earlier in the podcast, the Niners just sort of getting their defense and staying in their defense. And that is not a way to play this Chiefs team, especially when Patrick Mahomes has shown the ability to just get the ball out quickly. I think Ray Shirez will be a big reason why the Chiefs move the ball offensively in this game, especially if the if the Niners target stopping Travis Kelsey. Worth noting, Ray Shirez second in the NFL in yards after the reception at 8.4 yards per Catch, Debo Samuel, by the way, number one in the NFL. So it's a good game. Maybe if you like Debo and you like Rishi Rice to go over, this is a big reason why. So I have uh, Rishi Rice here over 66 and a half receiving yards. My, my, my second best bet for the Chiefs are uh, the Chiefs did at one point in the game have it exactly 13 points on the board in honor, in honor of Taylor Swift. Exactly 13 exactly points? Exactly 13 points. Wait, wait, could, could you bet on maybe maybe, maybe, maybe throw, a, throw a little pizza money down on the Chiefs to win by exactly 13 points? How about that? And they, the Chiefs don't win a lot of games by 13 points. Like they kind of win by this year by three, six, seven, thirty. I would be stunned if one team won by more than a touchdown this game. Well, that that was something that we 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 discussed. Uh, was it was like you know you can't really see one team running well. Like like there are prop bets out there where you can bet on like largest lead of the game. Yeah. I think it's 14, 14 and a half or, or something like that. So. I just I think it's a close game either way. One last one I I, I saw while we were preparing for this show. Uh, each team to have a touchdown and field goal in each half is plus twenty four hundred. You think there'll be field goals? We think I think there'll be field mm-hmm. goals. I think teams will score touchdowns. It doesn't feel like the worst wager out there. No, no, it, it doesn't. I, I could see so so basically each team so basically. Each team to have at least ten points. <laughs> a, a, a touchdown and field goal first half. Touchdown and field goal yeah. second. Both both teams. Yeah. So basically. You yeah. can see that, especially especially these kickers now, are, dude. The kickers. When I was in the NFL in 2012, when I was with the Vikings, Blair Walsh had I think 10 50 yard kicks. It was like a record. Mm-hmm. Even when I was when I was younger, 2008, John Casey, like I mean, oh John he, Casey, four, we, like 43 he, yards was like he a max. could probably still kick in the league. Yeah, but he but if anything over 44 yards, 40, <laughs> like does, now these guys 50 yards, 55 yards inside. I mean, 60. Well, we can try 60 yard field goal, no problem. Yeah. It's crazy. I've, if I could wager on on Moody to miss a kick, I think I would. Is there a way to is there a wager on missing a kick? Is that a, you can find I don't know. I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't see. I didn't see that one going through. Uh, we'll save that for the, the, the next the, podcast. The, yeah, we'll save that for the next podcast. So, yeah, it was fun. Fun kicking around the uh, the, the Chiefs with uh, Sammy and Will. Appreciate you uh, downloading, rating, reviewing, subscribing like you've done all year. Checking us out. Hopefully, you've checked us out on our YouTube channel and all the digital clips that you've seen online have allowed you to do that because the studio and the, and the, and the graphics and the look here is great. It's incredible in here. So And the air conditioning is just oh, we love 100%. It. We, go, we have a lot of space down, right on top of each other too. And I got a nice little table here for my drink so you can't see it. <laughs> hey, we had a salt bagel this morning. I got to stay hydrated for the salt, from, the, from the salt. For Sammy, for Will, for Jeff, I'm Bear. Remember, less you bet, the more you lose when you win. Thank <laughs> you.